Are we ready? Go ahead. Well, here we are, another live question and answer show. Very exciting things happening at the shop, including upcoming a week from Monday. This coming Monday is going to be the an arts and crafts chair that's done by Jimmy that's coming up on the online classes. So we really, uh, there's a lot to learn on that. It's a different style chair. Uh, usually they're thinner frames and uh, Jimmy did a good job. Really, really difficult job, but he did a good job. And he's actually going to be working on another chair. It's a mahogany hand carved. Some people might call it a Jacobian chair, but I call it more of just the hand carved side chair. I think it was a custom made chair because it's got some unusual curves on it that I've never seen before. So uh, that's coming a little bit later. And I'm really excited to announce Bernice coming on board on our, our school. And as we move along, we're going to be having other cra uh, craft people and, and uh, coming on board teaching. And she, she's actually an expert. Um, she's been uh, slip covering as long as I've been upholstering. She's what we call a seamstress, where I'm a stitcher. Uh, the difference is uh, seamstresses have much, much more fine, fine lines that they use, fine detail. And that's what you need as a slip cover person too, by the way. But she, she's going to have a, a series of videos showing people how to uh, do slip covers. The first one that she's going to show is a parson chair, which for me to do a parson chair, if you're not familiar with the parson chair, that's an upholstered leg. And the older parson chairs, had, had the rails were upholstered too. So you can imagine how difficult these chairs are. So they weren't upholstered and then the chair put together. They were upholstered on the chair, so they're a little, they're a little tough to do. Um, but she shows you how to slip cover one of those. And, and it's really interesting. So stay tuned for that. And um, I'm really excited. I think I'm going to be having other, other crafts people. What I really want to do is I have nobody lined up right now, so don't get too excited. I want somebody to manufacture their own fabric or, or loom their own fabric. And I have a source um, uh, of looms, and I have a source, hopefully, of, of people who are willing to teach that. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. But it would be kind of neat to show a student looming their own fabric and then taking it all the way up to the upholstery. So we're really excited about that, um, just the potential of that. But there's great potential in, in Broadway Upholstery School. And, and if you haven't, uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, you should go there and, and take a look at what we're doing. Um, and, and also the YouTube channel. We love the YouTube channel. Um, but don't forget to subscribe, please. Um, uh, we ongo ongoing putting posting there um, as fast as we can make them. I'm telling you, it's it's hard to keep up with this stuff, but you really do need to be timely, and we're, we're really trying hard. So we've had a, also um, our live classes over in uh, Lexington, Massachusetts, um, Lexington, Massachusetts, a beautiful facility over there called Lexington Arts and Crafts. So give them a little plug because. They have just been so accommodating to me. Um, and I can't tell you, if you want to see some pictures, uh, you can go to their website, and, or our website, I believe. We have some pictures uh, on our Facebook page. And also wanted to mention the forum. So there's a lot going on. Uh, the forum is the Broadway Upholstery School on Facebook, right, Pat? Yep. You can go there, and they can see the new space that we have. It's, it's, it's a... Yeah, I couldn't have designed a better space if somebody said, here, uh, if an architect came up to me and said, here, design a, a space, I don't think I could have done a better job than this space. I'm really excited about that over there in Lexington. So it's the first time I've really had a good off-site place. I mean, this where we are now is just the, the, the quarters are way too small. So um, we have also, Jimmy is live in our vast studio audience out there. I think, I, I think if I looked at his ticket number, I think he's seat number one. Yes. Is that right, Jimmy? Uh, out of one, yes. I'm waiting for the popcorn and drink to be coming soon. <laughs> Um, so if you guys can speed that up. Uh, okay, well we'll have you over talking to you about your chair, maybe even have you come up and uh, over here at some point. But um, the first thing we want to get to is some business, some, some questions. Um, and, and don't forget this is a live question and answer, although what we're finding we're finding that people are watching um, after it, which is fine. Oh, Erica is watching now, and she's not driving for a change. Erica's not driving. Erica, thank you, and thank you for your recent feedback that we had we talked about, and uh, thank you for all your support, and we really appreciate. It. Erica's one of our first supporters at the school, and also on the on the YouTube, I think, and we really appreciate um, her. I'm going to get to some questions, unless she has a question. I'm just going to get to some questions here now. 
And I think Jimmy might find this question interesting because Jimmy, Jimmy has a, I think Jimmy has a fascination with all things batting. You know, he, he likes all kinds of batting. So pay attention, Jimmy. Uh, well, and there'll be an next question and answer. Yeah. Right. Now this question is from Ann. I don't know where she's from. Ann, from the website that. Oh, right, but I don't know, she doesn't, we don't know where it's, a lot of these people are from, but that's fine. So Ann asks, she says, hi, I watch all your live questions and answers. It's just that I usually see the recording, which is fine. So this is a late question. On your late October live question and answer, you talked about reusing horsehair. You mentioned that coconut fiber, Jimmy, is second to horsehair as a batting material. <coughs> she says, is it possible to reuse coconut fiber? Can it be washed in the way that horsehair can be? Um, let me answer this question. Uh, you can definitely reuse coconut fiber. In the past, what, I, what I've done is I've blown it out with the air compressor. Um, it gets really dusty. Um, you probably do that outside. I've never washed it. I've never had anybody say that they washed it. I think that you probably could. I think that it would clump up the same way that real horsehair clumps up and you just have to repick it. I would say if you want to experiment on this, uh, do it. Um, but make sure that you put it inside a pillowcase. Make sure that you tie it off really tight. Uh, that it doesn't open and, and put in the washing machine in the pillowcase. Don't put the fibers directly and obviously in the washing machine. But you make sure that it's really tight too. Uh, I've had people who put horse hair in and um, it's come out of the, of the pillowcase and it's, uh, it can ruin the machine so be careful with that. That's why when you go into a laundromat they say no horse blankets. I think it's because of the hair more than it is about the actual blanket. Uh, it doesn't, it's not too good for the machines. Uh, then she goes on. Um, do you sew coconut fiber to the burlap the way horse hair is sewn to burlap? Yes, we do. Um, and thanks for all your instruction, encouragement, and encouragement, Anne. Well, thank you, Anne. Those are some good questions. Um, let's go on to the next one. So Mary, um, this is just a recent question. And she's uh, t uh, commenting on how to upholster an 1860s chair double piping. So she says, I really enjoy watching your videos and I have learned so much. I'm just an amateur, but I am a seamstress and a crafter. I like Ooh. that. Seamstress. Now, when she uses, she doesn't use that word lightly. When she says, when she's calling herself a seamstress, I believe that she's very good at, at what she does. Um, and then she says, have covered kitchen chairs seats and now working on some kitchen chairs for a friend. I'm in South Carolina, so I enjoy the Boston accent. You know, it's funny, I was just telling my son that for people who are having a hard time understanding me, we may have sub, what do they call those, captions? <laughs> Jimmy? Subtitles? Subtitles uh, for our Boston accent. Um, oh, I don't think we talk that funny. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you do, but... Well, you know, growing up, the Boston accent was something that, to be honest with you, Bostonians were a little embarrassed about, but now that those two, what are their names, uh, those two actors who became popular with... Ben Google. Affleck and, and um, Matt Damon. And Matt Damon, oh, yeah. Oh, do I throw in Jim Olsen, too? And there's a guy named Jimmy Olsen who was a small bit part, my friend Jimmy, who was in the vast studio audience, had a bit part in, what was that movie, Jimmy? Uh, the Town. The Town. And he just informed me how long, it, what was it, 10 minutes, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, I know, more like uh, 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you got in there. How many people can say that? You yeah, I wasn't nominated for everything, but, I, you know, I, I am hopeful. But, you know, maybe I'll get called again, uh, you know. One day, maybe. Oh, oh, are you in the SAG? Uh, no, not yet. That's, I, need, that's, I believe I need a few more hours to uh, okay. that exposure to you. you <laughs> well, know. we're looking forward to seeing you on the big screen. Well, thank you for that. Um, and then now we have another question from Diana. She says, and now she's talking about stuffing a cushion cheaply and effectively. And um, a lot of times we do these videos, uh, and I really do have a mission about saving furniture. I think any upholsterer would tell you that. We're out to save as much furniture and hopefully get a reasonable amount of money to do it. Um, uh, but it's important, I think, for the environment. I think that if we save all this furniture instead of, you know, when people buy new furniture, they're throwing an old piece away and they're buying another one that has to be manufactured. So it's actually a double whammy. 
on the environment. So with, with saving furniture, um, I think it's the great, greatest recycling that you could do. So she, she picks up on that. She says, great job. Thank you for being environmentally conscious. Well, thank you. Thank you for the great, the great compliment. Now, I have something written, I think, in French. Uh, respect, he says. Merci beaucoup, I think. That's, uh, I'm, I'm not that good in my French, Jimmy. Are you good in your French? Uh, no, not this week, Kevin. See no, I did not take a language in school. I regret that immensely. Oh, well, you know, you missed out. I did. I did. I believe, you know... Too late now, I believe, but that's, that's a... Would have come in handy. Now, he's also commenting on how to upholster an 1860s chair part four, and that was stuffing the seat. So he must have been doing something like that. And his his name is Joker Joker. I wonder if it's uh, the real Joker, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> I don't know. He probably, you know, he may know an awful lot about being, being the Joker. <laughs> All right, so our next question comes from C.H. Period Nedrog. And this is about the live workshop Swan Chair. That, so last week we had our Swan Chair on, which I... And now Lucas is in here and he just wanted to know how that went, so it's a good time. Well, Lucas, we have that retired to the basement for now because I, I tell you something, I'm, I'm not looking forward to this chair. And we saw those dramatic curves, you know. I'm going to have to... Um, and you know, this is a good tip for everybody now, um, which certain things are a little harder to do. I'm not sure if you, if, if you guys have done this, but if you're upholstering, you save those tough jobs for the right time. You don't want to do a job like that at the end of the day when you're tired. Um, I usually try to find real quiet time, usually early in the morning to start a job like that. And then I don't go, I don't go right through that job, I would I would pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. That's the type of job that is. Uh, it needs a lot of contemplation. So I would uh, I would approach that job in a completely difficult job I approach in a, in, a, in a totally different way. Now sometimes the customer, and I would tell the customer that, you know, you're gonna have to give this project a little bit longer. Some of the straightforward stuff, yep, you start stripping it, you start a pull, you're cutting the fabric, sewing the fabric, upholstering it, and then delivering it. I mean, all just get it, you know, go right through. Some jobs you can, most jobs are like that, but as you, as you get better in your, in your craft. But let's move on to the last question here. And then I'm going to have Jimmy come up. I want to talk to him a little bit about this uh, semester uh, with the chair, with the um, arts and crafts chair. Um, so the last, Michael, uh, before I get to the last one, are there any live questions? Um, and as usual, if people are watching and they and they um, they can always contact us like these people did after the show. Um, we, we love questions. Nicole says hello from Portland, Oregon. Uh, hello, Nicole from Portland. Portland, Oregon. Portland, Ooh. Oregon. Yeah, I used to watch a cable show. It, it, it was the man, a wild man. He was out there in the wilds of Oregon. Remember that show? I can't remember the name of it, but he was uh, running around in the woods, Jimmy. Do you remember that? That when show? It, was it The Incredible Hulk? No, he so was. A, no, of? This is recent. Uh, he's a mountain man. He's out there. They, they, they. I don't know if it was set up or whatever, but they would follow him around the woods. He would live out in the woods. He'd live. His favorite place to, to live was a, a tree stump, a big tree stump. Oh, I did. didn't see that show. No, no. Nope. I can't remember the name of that show, but anyhow, I don't think. Um, I don't think she, she would be out in the woods. I think she probably would be watching us from the living room or something, not from a stump, right, Jimmy? I hope not. I mean, <laughs> although she might be one of those very versatile outdoorsy women, and that that'd you, be a great. Thing. You never know. There's a lot of shows about Alaska lately on on cable that are interesting. Well, I think it'd be nice to see what it's all about out there, Mr. K. Well, maybe you should take a trip. Uh, yeah, we can maybe find some. Uh, some uh, abandoned... Uh, you know, Jimmy, I'm sure there are dog sled seats that need upholstering up there. Yeah, exactly. We could probably, like, I can right? roll off a few things. Bring your, bring your scratch card. I can bring that a, a Malumet. <laughs> and, and, you know. So the last question I have here, unless there's a live question, is uh, the fact that... This is from Michael. And this he's talking also about the stuffing cushion cheaply. He said, the fact that you save money in the environment makes you a hero in my book. What do you think, Jimmy? 
Well, I think that's a noble thing, Kevin. I think, uh, you know, trying to uh, replace uh, a good piece of furniture with, uh, you know, something that's been already been outdated a little bit, it's, it's a good thing. Why, it's all the good. furniture today, mm, I don't know, I'm so sure it's, uh, it's up to standard. I, I agree. So he also goes on and says, I am on my third sofa in three years. You just wow. saved my conscience. Wow. Yeah. I think he, what he's saying is he's been through three sofas in three years. Is that, I think that's what I'd he's like saying. I'd like to see what they look like. I, <clears throat> I doesn't it, surprise me. <clears throat> it well, doesn't I, surprise me. I think me. I'd want to see how they're made and see what goes on. How, that's the thing about new furniture is they're expert on the top. You know, it looks great, shiny, it's got all the bells and whistles, but um, the fabric and, and the frame and, um, isn't, isn't up to snuff, you know. I mean, I see a lot of this faux leather. You've got to be very careful with faux leather. Faux leather uh, tends to peel off. I've heard people after a year or two, the, the faux leather starts to peel, you know, and they're spending decent money on this stuff, you know. It's not well, cheap, you know. Well, I, I mean, it's really sad that you're spending that much money and, and you're not seeing the, I mean, years ago, what was, it? was the leather, leather better, Kevin, than it is now? Oh, yeah, leather, but it has to be a particular leather. I mean, it has to be a nice Italian leather. And the thing about leather is, Jimmy, leather is four millimeters thick when okay. it comes off the cow, right? Right. At least four. Four. Let's say four to six, but okay. let's say four for the sake of argument. Um, it comes off the cow, so you have the leather on the top and the and the suede on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay. The very the very best companies will take the first two millimeters and use that as their as their leather, and then the dyeing process is just superb. Mm -hmm. um, and that the cow, by the way, in a very fine uh, furniture uh, leather, the Italians are known for their leather, for instance. The cows are free grazing, they don't have barbed wire. To, so that means that the, they don't uh, go up against the barbed wire. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these leathers uh, are with uh, cows that are corralled with barbed wire, right. and, and you see a lot of the, the imperfections um, in the leather as such, scratches and even holes. Really? So when you buy the leather, you have to be very careful. So the worst, so the not so good manifest. So where does the bottom two millimeters go? That goes off to you know companies that aren't as good, right? Secondary and, companies. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, you'd really have to be careful with leather. The thickness of leather is important. Some people just use the whole four millimeters. That's no good when you're upholstering. It's too thick. Mm. So it's got to be the right thickness because it has a stretch so and the right would it tanning be the process. Top two layers of the leather. Top two layers of a cow the that isn't grazing against barbed wire or anything wow. like that. So that's why it's expensive, you know. And I mean, I know there's a there's a fabric shop here in in, in Boston that has leather, and I've always inquired. Yeah, we have a question, Jimmy. A live yes. question. We take those over. What? Those are pressing. What? So, so what what is the question live? Uh, this is from Tom. Hi, Tom. It says, if the fabric isn't thick enough, the teeth in the metal will sometimes poke through the fabric and tear the fabric. Is there anything I can do to avoid this? What? Oh, yeah. There's a couple. That's a good question. So I'm not sure. So there are two things possibly that he could be talking about that are metal with the teeth. One would be three, actually. One would be the strip. The, the strip... Um, that has the spikes in it. And I think, you know what, I think I might even have some here. <clears throat> well, I have this. And I have, the only thing I have is the ply grip. Okay, and ply grip, there's two types of these, of these grips. Ply grip is the softer of the two clothes that closes outsides up, right? And then you have what they call curvies. Don't be deceived with the name. The ply grip is easier to work. And the way you distinguish ply grip from curvies is that ply grip only has two prongs. The curvies has three. So they were a newer product and they had to be a little different. That's why they have the three prongs. And they, the problem with that is it comes in three different um, uh, firmnesses. And even what they call the light curvies doesn't compare to the ply grip. Ply grip has the perfect, um, it it's just folds better and it lines up better. So what, what Tom is asking about 
is that he's used either this, I wouldn't recommend using the strip by the way. If you're using the strip, switch to the ply grip. The ply grip is the best way to close up outsides. So if he's referring to the ply grip, or if he's using the curvies, that could be coming through because that's firmer. But even with the, if you have a lighter fabric that you're using, I'll show you what I do. This is really a good question. So usually what happens is it starts peeking through on the, on the uh, out, outer uh, portion or the beginning or the end of what you did. So when you, cut the, when you cut this, it leaves a sharp edge. Even the machine edge down below is okay, but even their, their edge, you know, if you feel it, it's, it's a little sharp. So what I do is I take the extra time just to take that, I curve it out. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. And then, not only, that's not good enough. If it's a really light fabric, Okay, then we fold it, we get it ready for the fabric to be inserted, and then I put a little piece of Scott, um, ma I mean masking tape, over the end. So that's the answer, Tom. That's the best way of the ply grip. Cutting, your cor cutting the edge, uh, cornering it out, and then in addition to that, you're using the, the um, masking tape over that, and then you close it. You'll never have another problem again. Good question. I'm glad you asked it. So, any other questions live yet? Tom probably has a follow-up question, I'm sure. <clears throat> uh, well, he says, I'm using Kirby's. I need to get some uh, yeah. ply grip. Kirby's, Thanks for the input. you're welcome. Kirby's is that, you get, I think you've got three different firms. Like I said, even though what they call the lightweight is not good, I don't use it. Always get the ply grip. Uh, the other alternative too, which I didn't mention, um, is hand stitching your outsides. Um, now that swan chair that Lucas was talking about, if, I don't know if Tom saw that swan mm -hmm. chair, that was, that's going to get hand stitched because that's, that's a museum piece and that's, that, that deserves to be hand stitched. So that's a, it's an endearing feature. So we have another question. Uh, this is from Lucas. He says, Hi, Lucas. you aren't nervous about using nice fabric scissors to cut the metal? Yeah, um, no I'm not. Um, I'll tell you, um, that's why we have scissor sharpeners. And there's nothing else that's going to cut it, unfortunately. <coughs> that's a good question, Lucas. These are my favorite scissors, too. But I do use them to cut the uh, ply grip. It's so important, actually, to do it. Um, so I sacrifice a little bit on my blade. But what I, if you notice, when I was cutting, I was up in here. Um, I try to save the points of my scissors as much as I can for cutting fabric. Up here is more of that, that heavy stuff. Um, but then eventually, this, these scissors, the, the, this is a Wist uh, brand. These are beautiful scissors. They, they really sharpen up nice. So um, Some people have an extra pair of scissors that they use to cut that. That's not a bad idea, too. I have another question. Uh, this is from Erica. Hi, Erica. Do you have to use the paper tack strip with the fly grip? Paper tack strip. Oh, I know what she's talking about. Um, oh, um, that that tacking tape um, can only be used on a straightaway. I know what she's talking about. Um, so you can't use. So it's only it's used to speed you up a little bit. So if you're doing an outside back that says square, so you can only do the top um, the top of it because it's straight. And then you have to close up the sides with the ply grip. So, um, if the back, if 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 there's any curved pieces, usually the sides are angled down, so you need to use your ply grip. But if the back is curved, really curved, you can't do, you can't use the, you can't use this, you can't use the tack tape. Only on a straightaway. That only works on a straightaway, and usually on the top of an inside or an outside arm. So, do we have any other questions? So Jimmy, why don't you come on up here, and I want to talk to Jimmy a little bit about, and, and feel free to ask questions. If you have a question for Jimmy, Jimmy's been posting for how long, Jimmy? Oh, God. Jeez, it feels like forever. It's been about uh, seven, eight years, I think. Wow, it's been that long. So you were one of our first customers here yes. as, as a student. I, maybe not the original class, but I was, I was right in there. You were here in the old days. The, the very old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, you were in a class in this space here. We've got about, I don't know, 
500 square feet here, Jimmy, mm -hmm. and we had 12 people in here teaching. Yes, thankfully we, everybody had a chair. Right. You know, nothing huge at the time. I'm sure people would have loved to bring to be bringing in a like say a love seat, an oversized chair or something, but. I think it worked well. I mean, considering the fact that you had uh, the space you did, and everybody was kind of being respectful of trying to work with, you know, taking fabric and cutting it, and you know, stripping down the chairs. It all seemed to work out well. So, can I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, yeah, you may. So, so you um, do you enjoy upholstering as a hobby? Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Uh, I never thought I would be still in it this long. I mean, people ask, "Oh, wow, you really, you really like doing this?" I said, "Yeah." Arts and crafts type of things always interested me doing that, and and I I'll, I'll, I think I'll be doing it for quite a while. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Uh, you know, so Jimmy, um, what he's doing now these online classes, and and if you guys have seen uh, the Boston <coughs> Ottoman, was that the Boston? Yes, Ottoman? the Ottoman that I need. I wanted to finish it. I wanted it matching the the chair that I had done a few years ago. Right. And I somehow went back to the fabric store. And found the fabric, which is unusual. Wait, you found the same fabric? The same Do you fabric. Know how uh, how rare that is. I was that is, like stunned. That's very unusual. Yes, I said I'll get something to match it. That's what I was looking for. That was the thing. And when I walked in there, I said, "You got to be kidding me!" Wow. It was about three years. Because the average shelf life for fabric, I would say, is about a year and a half, two years. Yeah. It's like a fruit fly from yeah. crying out loud. Oh, really? Fruit flies, they, they, their lifespan is very short. Jim. Really? How well do you know that, Kevin? <laughs> Michaela would know that. So. Well, Michaela, would you also know that a fly brings up another story about Oh, God, a fly. here we go. Not that story. Yeah, well, we already <laughs> talked about that story. But we know that flies have a closed circulatory system, and they do not have internal organs like a heart or a lung or anything. We know, well, we know that. Well, yeah, already. you were corrected on so, that story, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> So it brings up another subject, you know, when we're teaching the class, I try to make it approachable. So I think humor is really important. Yes. On the serious side, I mean, I, I do, I think, um, you know, when I first opened a business, I got some help uh, with some older gentlemen who, who school people who were opening up a business. Mm -hmm. um, and they said the most important thing or the hardest thing to do is to get somebody to cross over your threshold. You know, the threshold of your front door. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Um, and then you have to be approachable, you have to have a good reputation, you know, yeah. people need to know that they're going to be cared for, you know. And, and humor, actually, as long as it's not too risque, we, we try to avoid the risque. Risque in the upholstery world? I don't know, whatever do you mean? <laughs> well, we tell jokes like, you know, upholsters never die, they always recover. <laughs> Right? See, it still gets a laugh. <laughs> That's why Jimmy's still here, because he, he laughs at my jokes, anyhow. So we try to keep it light. You yeah, know? you have to. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, some people are more serious than others, so you have to respect that, right, Jimmy? Well, I mean, it's always good to have the sense of humor. A good approach to anything is, is, is important, no matter yeah. what it is. But I believe that, yes, when you're doing a project, yes, you want to get serious about what you're doing. You want to concentrate, and I think that kind of... I noticed that when we first start a class, you know, it, it, the, the work is a little easier. T taking things apart is a little easier than actually putting it back together again. And what I find is that um, as we go along, it gets a little bit, you have to ease up a little bit on the humor because it gets a little bit more serious. People want to a little more do their Yeah, now, you, now you're going from a shedding process to now we're building, rebuilding again. And right. sometimes that is a lot more work with the batting and the mm -hmm. springs and the webbing and, you know, a little more time. But I think people don't realize that. So yeah, they kind of, I think when that starts, for me anyway, when I start building it back up, I get a little more serious. I kind of say, okay, what am I doing? Oh, you know. So, more. so what, when you were doing the Ottoman, we had every project, no matter what it is, there's problem solving that has to happen. And so you had a couple of things on that Ottoman that were a little different. Like manufacturers today, boy, they're, they're not making it easy. Even the high-end manufacturers are not making it easy for upholsters sometimes. I think they, they're they expecting a lot of the furniture just to be tossed. That's right. So when they're putting things together, they're, they're, they're gluing upholstered legs on. And they're, right. Um, they're, you, can't, you can't work around. You've got to cut around those legs sometimes. So on that ottoman, uh, if you guys haven't purchased it, that on Broadway Upholstery School, it shows little ways of getting around those things. I think yes. on, on the legs, we had problems with the legs on that. We had to yeah, it was one piece. I, I had no idea on the frame how it was going to be. Right. And of course, then you realize that the legs had a little bit of a notch in all of them. And the fabric was inside the notch. And it was, 
kind of kind of surprising. I mean, you, you get a better idea of what's out there. Right, I mean, and, and um, on your arts and crafts chair. Yes. Now that's an older chair, but that chair had a lot of a lot of difficulties with the mitered seat, things like that. That's, yeah. That's upcoming, by the way. If I I think I might have mentioned it early on, but a week from this Monday, that should be coming okay. the, the first class. Okay. That is a difficult chair. The simple <coughs> simplicity is 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 not always easy. Well, I mean, the the idea that this I thought webbing and springs was going to be the material, the, the starting point of it all, but it was a, what was the uh, spring-loaded set? It was a, uh, you had a drop-in spring unit that we didn't want to mess with because they had it anchored in there with these big nails. Yeah. So yeah. We, sometimes we were working around those things, you know. Sometimes you, you, you get too aggressive with taking something down to the frame. It's not necessary in most cases. Mm -hmm. That's why I think Erica is going to get a, a, a custom video soon. We promise that's coming. I'm just waiting for the fabric on this. I got the perfect piece, and I'm waiting for the fabric. But um, I think the point I wanted to make is um, I, I lost my train of thought. No, it's about how you know, especially with the chair that I did. Um, there was all the older fabric. Mm -hmm. It was a reupholstered job. Right. Um, they did make some amends to the backing. Um, um, so we're not getting too aggressive. We're not. We're not tearing it down to the frame. That's the point I wanted to make. This. But uh, a lot of furniture, like this one that you're going to be doing, mm -hmm. this new one uh -huh. uh, coming up. This um, is this you don't. It's sometimes they're a quarter restoration, sometimes they're half a restoration, sometimes they're a full restoration. What I mean by full restoration is you take it down to the frame and build up. Mm -hmm. It's a great learning tool, learning opportunity, but it's not always the best thing for the aesthetics of the piece. Right. So, like on your piece, um, we need to be careful to keep the aesthetics, to keep what the original builder. I remember one time I did a French chair, a mm -hmm. fully upholstered French chair. Okay. And uh, the upholsters over the years had just been going over the old fabric. Oh. So the arm was straight, and the woman said, I'm not happy with this. She, she called me, and I was another upholsterer coming along. And I said, well, I think I know what's wrong with it, and I think you've got to be prepared when I, when I do this, because so, those arms are supposed to be not, those are supposed to be swooping curve arms. And what were they, straight? That, because there was so much fabric that was went over each one, it changed the whole integrity of the piece. It changed the look of the piece completely. Wow! Turn it into a uh, a club chair, a regular club chair instead of a, a nice French side chair. So, uh, uh, so all of the the accented wood with all. The well, no, I'm just talking about the upholstered. Ah, part. okay. So I took it down. I, I fixed it. I took all the old fabric off, and we we upholstered very. It has to be upholstered very tight, and. Mm -hmm. it, and all, all of a sudden, all of the lines came. When I delivered it, she couldn't believe it. It was the chair that she remembered, finally, came back. Was that her original chair or something? It was she her picked? chair. She remembered it. She remembered the chair as having more curves to it. And over the years, an older woman, over the years she had been getting it upholstered. And, it is, and it's just getting fatter and fatter, right? <laughs> wow. And then one day, uh, it has to be restored to its original. But I'm surprised she didn't tell, any, tell them to strip it down to and then build, I, well, this is what I want. I want to well see, it. this is why, it's a good point, Jimmy, it's really good to communicate with your clients, and sometimes, um, it, it's some, you know, and the biggest, what you ask any judge in the country, they'll say, what's the biggest uh, problem with uh, people suing one another? It's, it's the verbal contracts, it's the verbal, you, you need mm -hmm. to make sure that you, um, you verbalize and, and talk about the process, you know, mm -hmm. and tell them what you're going to do, um, exactly what you're going to do. And um, if there are any changes, make sure you tell them about changes, if mm -hmm. there has to be a change, you know. Right. And communication is really important. Well, there's going to be the chair that I'm now doing, which is original fabric, yeah, and the webbing, the, the springs, the ties. This is a, a back to build up project for me, and I yeah. wasn't expecting it. Yeah. So this will be, uh, you know, back to basics. This will be like the first job I, the first class that I did when I brought in that simple chair. The very first eight years ago. Yes. I remember that day, Jimmy. You came in. Your your head was down, and you would, you would try to do something at home, and uh, there was a big accident of some sort. You, you you put the fabric on backwards or something like no, that. No, I wasn't that bad. You can't. <laughs> or upside down. I wasn't, I wasn't in that much of a dilemma, Mr. K. I said, come in, we'll, we'll help you yes, out. Yes, I was a wayward man walking down Main Street in, in Arlington, Massachusetts with a chair. Like, can you help me? 
Can we help me? Well, and everybody turned me away, but you took me in. I took you in, you orphan boy. <laughs> you, were, you were a 50 year old orphan, and we felt um, bad for you. Yeah, and you felt sorry for me. You yes. said, Let me help you, but that'll be. <laughs> you, were, uh, you were a veteran of the Ottoman Wars, were you? Uh, well, I was a veteran of something. I just couldn't figure. Walking down the street and walking so many miles, I kind of lost train of thought. <laughs> Jimmy, do you have any other questions? Do you have a question for me about a recent project? Or? No, I, I mean the, uh, the, the arts and crafts chair, I think we did a great job with it. There was, a great, yeah. you know, I get to back, go back to the, when, the back of the chair, doing some hand stitching, back to basics with some new cuts. You were showing me some new cuts that, again, I don't do it enough, so I want to kind of really get back into where I'm more sure of myself. Yeah, and it's, when you mentioned cuts, we have a couple more videos online. We have a question in a minute. But people should go to the YouTube channel to see. We've got a couple of new posts about how to cut around posts. And we have a cut around post. So we okay. have another question live. This is from Joseph. Hey, Joseph. He says, I wanted to ask. Should I make holes in foam and in wood to break the chair in on every project? That's a good question. He's, he's, it's very clever what he's asking. Um, the foam, no. Do, never, never put a hole in the foam. He might be thinking about pin core foam, and I would not use pin core foam in any type, or the, any type of latex. That's a latex with these little holes. Usually you see them in mattresses. Old mattresses. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, folks, never use. Uh, don't use memory foam. Don't use latex. To me, latex um, was a material that the uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright used to use a lot of latex in his architectural design and furniture. Um, but it's proven over time not to be a good material for upholstery. It's okay. organic. It breaks down. I don't care what they tell you. Even the, the memory new, foam. Memory foam is bad because it actually puts too much stress on the fabric. So when you push down a memory foam, mm -hmm. it's really squishy, right? Mm -hmm. And then it comes up slowly. Right. That wreaks havoc on fabric. So it's constantly stretching. Constantly it. stretching the fabric, and, you, and a seam's going to, you know, fail or whatever. So this, the proven foam is the high density, mid. Um, I use an ultra foam. It's called. It's mid density. That's the best. Uh, no matter what thickness. So, but what Joseph's getting to is he's getting to um, about air pockets. That's that's the question. How do you how do you prevent air pockets? So the air pockets that um, that he might have is because he's not putting a base down before he puts the foam on. So something between the foam and the fabric. It's the foam or the frame. <coughs> now that's uh -huh. another thing. We're not getting there. Let's start from the. Let's start from the right here. Okay. Let's show them this. So we have this chair, which which is not going to get foam, but let's pretend it is. That's another story. Hopefully, I'll get to this. I'm not even sure if we're going to get to this. We might. I want to do something live, on, live. So, so if we're going to put foam on this, mm -hmm. now he's saying well, we better put holes in there for the for the for the air pocket, right? He's okay. very intuitive, but you don't want to do that. Okay. You, you want to, what you want to do is simply take a, a cotton, a, a, a layer of cotton, and put it in like an oval shape. Okay. Feather it out with your fingers. Okay. Don't put it, and then put the foam on it. That takes care of the air pocket. Oh, okay. It really does a good job with the air pocket. Okay. But, but it, he's also could be thinking about uh, maybe, uh, we'll put the chair up again. He, he might be also thinking about a cushion. So Joseph wants to follow up if I answered his question, but on uh, leather cushions or naga hide cushions, mm -hmm. you definitely need um, breathers. They used to call them breathers in the old days. They used to put. They used to be um, on the back. There used to be a snap you put on, and there was holes in like a brass. It was a brass button with oh. holes in it. But the best way to breathe a cushion, a leather cushion or a full leather cushion, is with. Um, fabric on the bottom. It needs to be something breathable on the bottom because uh, leather is not a breathable material. Right, it's solid. Yeah. So it's a good question what he's asking. He's, he's asking about uh, application of battings pretty much. And that's, that's pretty um, specific to the chair too. You know? So on this one, I, 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 think, I think it gives me a little time to talk.
technical difficulties. I'm sure Patrick will get the sound up. Alright, it's back on. Let's see what happens. Sorry about the sound, guys. We're trying something new. What are we trying to do, Patrick? I was just trying to put a title over the video explaining where to go for the forum, and that seemed to mess everything up. He was just, <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll tell people. Patrick was just trying to tell people to go to the forum on Facebook, uh, the Broadway Upholstery School forum. Um, I thought he was trying to put subtitles on our Boston accents. And that's what that's why the sound went out, which would oh, be really we're ironic. Funny. <laughs> we're talking funny now. Is that what you're saying, Mr. K? Wouldn't that be ironic that well, the sound goes out trying to get subtitles for the Boston accent? Well, anyhow, let's go on now. We, yeah, let's, let's, let's get to the real backwards. lesson today. So the only thing this is going to get, it's going to be really minimized. The only thing I'm going to put on this is a full layer of cotton. Okay. So, Jimmy, I want to show you, uh, this is a little switch. Uh, how much is a full layer of cotton, by the way? A full layer of cotton, it, it, that's a good question. It varies because this is a natural material. So I was just commenting, we just got some cotton in today. And this cotton is a little bit on the thinner side, right? Um, some, and you know, if you feel that, Jimmy, what would you say? About an inch, maybe? Yeah, okay. nothing more than that. Sometimes it's, it's like <clears throat> almost another half layer thick, and I don't like it when it's that thick. This is a pretty good thickness. So I'm gonna show you, this is a little switch. Jimmy's gonna watch me work rather than me watch him work. Thank That's God, folks, you won't see this too often. <laughs> So I'm just going to put this over like this and show you how to trim this. I'm just going to, I don't know if you guys can see this. But Jimmy, hey, yeah, that's great. Hold yeah, that up for yeah, me. Yeah. So usually I'm doing this by myself too. We're going to have to remember this to have Jimmy uh, to help us. So I'm going to press down. My goal is to feather this out to where the burlap is. So uh, you don't want to use your scissors because this is a machine cut and you don't want a machine cut. That's how subtle this is, right? Oh. You don't want the machine cut. I'm going to feather the machine cut out too. But I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to press down. You're going to get some, a little bit of weight down there, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to press down with my right. I'm, I'm a right-handed person. So I usually, for some reason, I use my right hand to press down and my left hand to pick. So I'm feathering out to that burlap. I'm going to go all the way around. It's going to have to switch over here just to get in front here a little bit. You're, ru you're ruining my camera shot here. I know, Jimmy. You know, you're going to be discovered. There's a producer out there that's seen Jimmy in the town. He is available for other main movies. So, you know, give him a call. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's waiting. This movie. You know what they say, if the phone's not ringing, right? What is that, what is that expression? If the phone's not ringing, it's, it's me? That is? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. So uh, with the rest of it, the feathering, I'm just kind of tucking in a little bit, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't want that to impede where I'm going to be tacking, right? I don't want, the worst thing you can have is foam, I mean uh, cotton or Dacron uh, peeking through your tacks. Uh, it's very difficult to get rid of that because we're going to be covered, actually when you're using a gimp or a double piping, it's hard. But on this one here, we're going to be folding the fabric under and pulling and stretching because we're only going to be putting nails in. <coughs> and I want to show, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to the fabric. The fabric's going to be a beautiful blue velvet. Oh, nice. And as usual, Jimmy, remember, we, we got everything marked, we right? Made everything, yeah, that's the front. That says F, that's the front of the chair. Anything that's lying flat has a front <laughs> and a back, not a top. Mm -hmm. Anything that's up has a top. Okay. So that's important. Um, I'm just going to put this aside for a minute. Is that a news bulletin from the upholstery? So we got another, is this a Facebook, Patrick? Just came in. Just came in from Pam. She says, thank you for the tips live. A fundamental video on purchase. I was able to get pretty good progress on the bench frame my husband built. Wonderful. That's I great. love, but wait a minute, is that the one that was on Facebook? So this is on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I think what? you saw that, Jimmy. Oh. Jimmy. I did not see that part. She's, she's getting to the process of the upholstery and she's got the basics down now. And she's going to put a on her roll. And she's got a nice setup there. I like, I like her compressor. She looks comfortable. That's really important. Um, she's not in this, but um, when I mean comfortable, I mean that she's able to walk around her bench. She's got like a two or three foot circumference uh, where she's not tripping over. There's nothing on the floor. Isn't that interesting? I'm not focusing on her work yet. I'm, I'm looking around it. Okay. You need a good work area. You do need a good work area. You can't be. That's why I want to bring up Jim. You got to get a class over there in Lexington. That space over there. We have a, a beautiful space where there's. I mentioned that earlier, but 
there's a lot of walk around space in, over there in Lexington that I'm really happy about. Uh, but why don't you read that, Jimmy, what she says there. She says, thank you for the tips live and the fundamental videos I purchased. I was able to get pretty good progress on the bench frame my husband built. I found your source information very helpful and used them to purchase supplies. I'll post the final result early next week. This should be a great, oh, this will be great. I love this type of feedback. And yeah, she's got the, uh, she's done a great job with the webbing and uh, my God. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And we should get her, her with the uh, chair, I mean, uh, with the... You know, if people are, are in the, I'm not sure where a lot of these people are from. I know we have people on the West Coast, you know, mm -hmm. like Portland. We mentioned Portland and Seattle. Seattle. But um, we have a woman who comes up from Connecticut taking our class in, in Massachusetts. Well, we've right. had a few uh, around. I remember. And we had somebody from New Hampshire. Yeah, a few so. people from New Hampshire. Yeah. We've had people from the South Shore. Oh, I had one woman from Nantucket. She would take a ferry and then and then drive to get to the upholstery. Just class. be just to, just to be in you with you. Well, I think it's wonderful. It, it means that maybe there's not other classes out there. But if anybody's within a certain radius, um, you should look into that class at Lexington Arts. They're actually signing up for the next class which will be starting, I think, in three weeks, three or four weeks. Um, I think it's a great value, too. I think you should check it out. Um, I'd love to have you, especially if you've started out on YouTube with us. To, that, that would be kind of fun, having somebody take a class that saw us on YouTube. But thank you for the feedback. I really love it. So, so Jimmy, what do you think happens next after this? Well, let's see. we got everything settled here. I think we kind of do it. The fabric's already measured out, right? Yep. And we measure the fabric. Do you remember the fabric, how we measure it? I'm kind of inch and a half on each side? Exactly. You see, this guy knows what he's doing, right? Now, why is it an inch and a half on each side? You're going to be stretching it. You're going to it be... just gives you enough, right? Inch enough to stretch, okay. you know? Now, on this one here, I could have slimmed it down a little bit more because we're folding it under. So, what would you get? Well... But I can't get away from that three inches. You don't get into trouble. You can always slim something down rather than go the other way. Right? Yeah, we you can never add glue and the fabric together is out. Which brings up a good point. If you're upholstering and you're doing those cuts, you never, you you always focus on one cut first, get the pleats done, and then go to the next cut. Especially on the front, you never cut both. People want to cut everything at once. Well, they think it's going to be a custom fit. Yeah, they want to try for the custom fit. They yeah, but but piece. but if you cut here, mm -hmm. right? And make a mistake, or if you cut both and make a mistake on one of them, you, you have less you can, you know, kind of fudge. You know, sometimes you can ride a fabric over to make up for a bad cut, mm -hmm. but if you cut both of them, you're, you're kind of sunk. You have to go get another fabric, right? For more fabric. Yeah. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. Now, it's kind of liberating when you have a solid fabric, you don't have to match up any stripes. And we have about 10 minutes, so if you've got questions, well, you Well, I just want to mention that. Pam was the one on the forum who posted that picture, just checked into YouTube. And, uh, That's great. And we have a live question. Uh, this is from Lucas. Lucas. This is really cool he if says, this happens. I'm trying to figure out a way of getting to the States and coming for a semester. My wife has already given me her blessings. Wow. Know. Imagine if Lucas came all the way here. Uh, I would, <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it, Jim? Well, where's Lucas from? I think he was from Belgium. I, I uh, want to say Belgium. I, I think wow. so. I always oh, you get a, you'd have to give him the full Monty on the class time. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, have yeah. him be like, like, take care of some projects. If he made that commitment, we he should. He would have to be in a video, too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We promise you, Lucas, if you manage to come, we'll put you in one of the videos. That, yeah. that would be that would be a good story. Now, now we have had a worldwide influence. Um, we, we did a, um, a mud cloth video about Patrick. I should mention that. The uh, mud cloth is a, is a wonderful material that's made from the mud, from the African soil over in, what was the country, Patrick? Malia. Huh? Malia. Malia. And, Malia mud cloth. Malia. I think that was the name of the video, Malia mud And uh, what the yeah, nice Mali, thing, sorry. we did that for, we did a YouTube video for a woman who has a nonprofit in Lexington, Massachusetts, as good luck would have it, right? Mm -hmm. Another well, Lexington, Massachusetts connection. And she's helping the, the woman of, of Mali um, by purchasing these fabrics and okay. supporting them, which is the only uh, really income source that they have. This is, they've had a lot of problems over there in that part of the, uh, Africa. Mm. So I think it's wonderful. We did this YouTube video to promote her um, nonprofit. Um, okay. So 
uh, we have a worldwide reach. So you know, it's great that Lucas has has this interest. Nice. Is, yeah. So so what we're going to do is just put this on. Is there any other questions? Not not yet. And Jimmy, what I'm going to do is let, let's let's hold it up. You can hold it up for me. I'm going to uh, start. Um, you know, you guys, I can't emphasize enough. Um, student today. Um, all by herself was using the pin tacking method and it was a good thing too because if she had gone all the way in with the tack she would have made a mistake. Pin tacking is putting the tack in halfway, you're not committed to the tack, you can get the whole thing pin tacked or halfway in tack all the way around and then look at it and say I like it and you can either put the tacks in on this one here that's not what I'm going to do because the frame's too fragile. What I'm going to do is pin tack and then go back and staple it as long as I'm happy. Okay. But, um, you know, in the five minutes that we have, I did want to get a couple of these tacks in. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold over the back, and I'm going to be right over uh, just a little bit on the wood part away from the ribbing of the old caning. Let me get my, oh, how was that, Jerry? Did I miss? Mm. Don't, don't tell anybody. I didn't hear that. So we'll just get one on for now. We're going to put it down here, and then, uh, Jerry, I'm going to trim this up. Because when you're doing this type of work, you're going to be putting these tacks in. Um, you don't want too much of a fold on it, because then you'll see the edge of it. So we need to be kind of close here, so it's a little scary. I'm just going to stay where you are. Okay. And I'm just going to cut this at about, about a half of an inch, or three quarters of an inch beyond the ribbing. Okay. And then I'm going to fold this and I'm going to give it a little tug. Now this is where, if you were smart, which I wasn't, uh, you want to make sure you spread out some tacks and, so that you can pick them up one at a time. So we got about three minutes, you guys, if you want to get one last question in. Nice. Yeah. And so we're going to do that all the way around, Jimmy. We're gonna... The nice thing about having a low profile or hardly any uh, foam or batting mm -hmm. is that you don't need too much stretching. Mm -hmm. The more foam that you have, the more batting that you have, the more stretching that you have to do. Oh. Right. So if this was foam instead of the batting? We would be doing, this might even be our first pinning that might be okay. Okay. Can you believe that? Now you've stretched fabric. Sometimes you do one, two, three, four times you have to stretch it. Yes. And right? then I wonder if it's actually still centered right. Right. Well, that's also a talent that you, you're going to yes. develop. So what we're going to do now, um, we're going to be finishing up here. Um, what we're going to do is, we have a choice of, uh, these are French natural tacks, and they come in long stem, and they come in the regular size stem, and sometimes the long stems are needed in antique wood, but we don't need it here because there's never been a tack put in this wood. You want to mm -hmm. hold that, Jimmy? I know you don't want to. I, well, you know what, with this new chair that I have, I want to know what the style is going to be. Yeah, well, if you the, have Oxford. I have to speak to him. You have a very old-fashioned tack in that, that Oxford, that English Oxford uh, brass tack, it's called. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, uh, it's got these old dents in them, and um, they're very much more brassy than this. This tack is the French tack. It's a universal tack. It seems to go better with almost anything. So... Um, we use that. So we're going to use the short stem tack, and I don't like, so we're going to chain them, right? We're going to put them one, one next to the other, and if you guys want, I don't have time to start tacking this, but we have, um, on the YouTube, we have a, we show you how to put these tacks in. Somebody recently commented me, to me personally about the video that I have about how to put French nails in, and believe it or not, there's a little technique like everything else, but if you look at a French nail from the side, can you pick that up, the camera person? Can you pick the dome shape up of that dome shape? See the dome shape? So these aren't as easy as they look, right? You have to hit them on the head. So you have to hit them, but when you're putting a tack in, especially if you're using, like you're, you have a mahogany chair for you. Yes. You should go tonight, that's your homework, Jimmy, go on and see that video. Because when I'm hammering, you know, if this is a clock, and this is 12 o'clock here, mm -hmm. this is 3 o'clock here, this is 6 o'clock here, when I'm putting a, a tack in, mm -hmm. my hammer is all over the dial, right? You can't. Right? I'm this way, I'm this way, I'm this way. You just can't go straight because you're hitting a dome, and the dome, wants, the dome always wants to go one way or the other. So you're always adjusting the hammer, and you're using the hammer end of your hammer, 
not a rubber tip. Some people out there say, why doesn't he use a tip hammer? Because that has too much of a bounce. So you want to use the, the hammer without the tip. Yes, it will scratch a little bit, but don't worry, these will tarnish over time. It doesn't matter. Um, it's better for you. Now they have a, also, they have a gun now that shoots these You're tips. Kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Oh. Do not get that gun. It's very expensive. And it does not, the thing about it is, when you're putting, this is a little different because it's face down, but when you, when you put, hold it up like that, um, usually when you put, you put, you're going across the, like the front of a sofa, mm -hmm. and the thing about you as the person putting them in, you're a little bit above eye level, right? Yeah. And that's how everybody's going to see it. Right. But with the machine, it's too perfect. You go straight in, and then you put the chair up. And they look crooked. Does that make any sense at all? No. It's better to do it by hand, one at a time. I believe in using a gun, a real gun, fill it <laughs> up and kind of, yeah. Didn't the Three Stooges invent that? Well, they did. Now they have it. I wouldn't advise you to get one, though. Well, is it on a strip, the tax? Uh, no, they come out of the gun, one at a time. Oh, you No, you're thinking of something else. They do have, they sell the strip. I don't recommend that, too. Now, quickly, we've got one more minute. But that's, uh, yeah? Uh, Nicole says, I like that you took... Orphan Jimmy in and gave him homework too. Smiley well, Jim, face. When I first found <laughs> Jimmy, he had you know Thank the you, Nicole. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know the beanie with with the little propeller on top. That was that, that was not that, me. <laughs> that yeah. wasn't Jimmy. That was another orphan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, Jimmy, I think that's a good closeout. You know, that's yeah. a good visual we leave with people. And uh, oh, yeah, well, thank you, Kevin. I'm Until <laughs> next week. <laughs> I'm glad Jimmy has a good sense of humor, but like we said earlier, it's always a good, it's a better approach, I think, to have a little humor, because some of the stuff that we do can be really tough, tough work and tedious, so you well, have to occupy yourself, right? Yes, yes, I will find out next week when I do that chair again, I can tell you. So. Uh, well, stay tuned, Jimmy, I, I hope you can join us next time, I know you can't do it every, every week, but we really enjoy having you, and thanks again for sh watching, and don't forget, follow-up questions are always appreciated. We'll answer those in the next uh, question and answer. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Good Thanks, show. Jimmy. Yeah, good show, Kev. Hey, good yeah. Show. <laughs> what are you going to do?